Well, good morning, cyber friend. <clears throat> it's the Mitty Man coming at you from Walker's Music. Yet another word for the day. Sunday morning edition. We give God all the praise and honor as usual. And uh, we thank God for each and every one of you. Cyber friends, you know who you are. Just want to say this morning that um, as you see in the title, <clears throat> the video said Kingdom, what? Duty. Kingdom, duty. Sister and brother, I come to you in the humblest way that I know how, and speaking a few things, we first, like I say, we we thank God for all of the cyber friends and the contacts and the people that have been with Old Middle Man from the beginning. We thank those that uh, have allowed Middle Man to touch in their lives, and musically, spiritually, as well as physically. You know, we do we do things according, hopefully, according to knowledge. But the reason I spoke of kingdom duty was speaking of first fruits, gifts, and all of the above. Everything that God has in, instilled, and I should say in, endowed us with. He gave us all spiritual gifts. Everyone is born with something that they can do perhaps better than anybody else. That's what we call our gifts and talents and stuff that we, that everybody have. And some people haven't discovered theirs. But, and then, you know, I do believe, I'm, I'm, I'm not for certain of this, but I do believe that there are some of us that miss our calling altogether. We live all our lives and never realize our calling and what we were called to do in this earth. And we waste our lives because we fail to even recognize what God gave us to do. Some of us don't even know it. And you, you ask some people now, they'll tell you, I don't know. They're just going through day, every day, day by day, just going, whistling through the dick, whistling Dixie, and just going through life and not knowing, not having a clue. But people, I don't want to be that way. And neither should any of you. You should not want to be that way. You should want to know what your gift, what your gifts and talents are, and you should want to know what God has created you for. Something that on this earth that you were assigned to do. There's a problem somewhere on this earth that you were assigned to solve. And each one of us, and I do believe that. Now, we just, some of us that just don't take time enough to realize what it is. Well, today we want to make an announcement, and we, uh, we are going to Pleasant Grove AME today. Pastor Reverend uh, uh, Stephanie Walter is the pastor. That's Pastor Stephanie Walton, pastor of the church, and they are having today their annual homecoming celebration. That will begin immediately after service this morning. And uh, we will be there today all day and everything, and I'll be with them if the Lord say so. And uh, But like I say, it's kingdom duty. I am a musician. Now, I don't compare myself to others. I do what I do. I don't try to I don't try to do like nobody else. I do like me. And so therefore, this Sunday, and my, my, my home church is there at the York Missionary Baptist Church, and as a matter of fact, they should be there in a few minutes taking care of Sunday school. I won't be there today. Deacon Walker will not be there today. Deacon Walker now got to go and serve the capacity as Minister of Music at Pleasant Grove AME. Like I say, kingdom duty. Kingdom duty. Once we get a hope to do it, see, it's not about, well, first people, people say, well, you should enjoy what you do. Yes, you should enjoy what you do. You should love your job. You should love what you do. Therefore, it's not a job when you love what you do. But let me tell you something, people. There are a lot of us, and excuse me while I get a drink, a sip of coffee. There's a lot of us that, we don't think that way. We don't think that way at all. We dread doing this. We dread doing that. We dread, 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 dread. Well, you know what? My great grandmom taught me. She said, when you dread something, that makes it go harder for you. Now, I do believe that there comes a time in when it's time to go. Now, if you if you have gotten to the place, I don't care where you whether you minister music or I don't even care whether you're a pastor or not. All of us are serving anyway, but nevertheless, when you get to the place to where 
you are just fed up with a place and you don't enjoy, you've lost the joy of being there. You don't want to, you don't, you don't want to use your gifts. Well, I think then, I mean, I always say you pray first, move one, pray first, pray twice, move one. <clears throat> but you should, I do believe that if you get to that point where you just dread to go somewhere that bad, and if it if it taking that much out of you to go there, maybe that's a, a sign that it might be time for you to leave there. Now I'm just saying. I mean, I mean, once you get to where there's no joy in it, that you don't have no motivation, you just you just doing it. You you just doing it as a job. You don't have no joy in it. You don't you care how the choir sounds. Or uh, if you a preacher, if you preaching the word and you don't, you just up there preaching out the Bible, they're throwing together a sermon, throwing it to the people. You don't care whether they receive it or not. I think it's time for you to move and find you another pastor. Now I really do believe that. I could be wrong, but until God show me that I'm wrong, I'm gonna keep this mind that I got. Any time that you are doing something like this, minister, music, pastor, or whatever it might be, whatever capacity that you might be performing. If you're not getting the joy out of it anymore and you don't really care to do it and you dread it, you don't care whether the people benefit or not, it's time for you to move on. I do believe that. And that's where a lot of us are today. We're at the crossroad. We're wondering which way to go because of the fact that some of us, we've been ridiculed, we've been, we've been ostracized, you've been beat up on, you've been treated bad, you've done... I mean, all of the nine yards, the whole thing above it, you just yet, you yet try to hang in there just to see, will people change? And some of them never change, not with you in a way. Like I say, we don't do things because of the people reaction. But nevertheless, some people are not going to care for you regardless of what you do. I mean that. They're not going to care for you regardless of what you do. You can climb Mount Everest, and they're still never going to give you any credit at all. Somebody can just roll over a little mole hill, and they'll talk about that to kingdom come. That's just the way it is. In other words, they, you are not one of their pet peeves. In other words, so in other words, they're going to, you know, they take lightly what you do. Even though if what you're doing is, is making a very, very bold statement. But nevertheless, we don't do it for those for to be bragged on and to be patted on the back. But there is something called respect. There is something called respect and honor. And I feel that when you are doing the best that you can, giving all that you got, and people will not honor you. I heard a teacher, Dr. Mike Murdoch, said, it's time to go. Don't stay where you are not honored. Uh-uh. If people are just tolerating you, don't stay where you're tolerated. Go where you are celebrated. Because, see, first of all, if you are just tolerated, as soon as they can find somebody else to replace you, they'll do it. They will do it. And if certain people was in charge, you would not even, you, you would be, you talking about prison. You'd be in prison if some people was in charge because they could care no more for you than to spit on the ground. Really. Really. And so that's how come I say I, we just try not to take that attitude of trying to strike back at people. But I do believe that God, well, Jesus said, be harmless as doves, be wise as serpents. So in other words, we must be wise to the fact. You know what I mean? If you just done did your best, the Apostle Paul said it very plainly, as much as it lies within yourself, try. That's what he said, to be at peace and live at peace with everybody and all the brethren. Well, he wouldn't have said try if it were possible to do that with everybody. He didn't say that. He said as much as it lies within yourself. In other words, you make certain that you are not the one. In other words, if I'm treating you the best that I know how and you're not reciprocating, it's not my fault. It's not my fault. In other words, I done done all I can do to try to get along with you, to try to treat you right, treat you right, and you just keep on stepping on me. No, I believe there is a time when you must do and cut the cord. In other words, he said, if your right hand offends you, cut it off. Cast it far from you. Better to enter into life lame with one hand than to go to hell with both of them. Because I do believe I could be wrong, people. I could be wrong. 
But I do believe what he mean by that, what, 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 what Jesus meant by cast, cut it off and cast it from you. In other words, anything that's going to cause you to, to sin, or cause you to miss the mark and every word, trying to deal with certain people. And every time you get with them and everything, y'all end, they end up making you sin. And I know y'all say, well, you know, we got free will. Yes, but there are people that can influence you. You stay away from bad influences and people that just sit around and talking about folks all day. You don't need to be in that conversation. You know why? Because if you stick around persons or people that are always talking about an individual, you're going to end up talking about folks too. That's that, that just the way it is. Now, if you don't, God bless you. You got, a, you got a special ability that I don't have. But bad company corrupts good habits. That's the Bible. Now, you ain't going to come and tell me that you has got more wisdom than God. He said bad company corrupts good habits. So whatever you might be doing right today, keep fooling with the wrong people. I guarantee you, something going to change about you for the worst. Amen. Amen. I just came to just say that to you this morning, people. I know that I had to go out. And today is the last, well, the third Sunday. Well, next Sunday is Christmas Eve. Now, we will be at my home church at that time. We will be having some morning service on that morning. I'm not certain how things are going to go because we already commune on second Sunday. So we won't be doing any communion on Christmas Eve because of the fact that I know it's Christmas Eve and I know the pastor know that. And a lot of the people are, are going to want to go back and kind of prepare. I know we are in service, but we can't stay in service all day, people. God realized that there are other things that goes on that we are part of, and we can't stay in church all day. God realized that. And see, a lot of time it ain't doing us no good to be there that, that hour and a half or two hours we be there. And I'm just speaking. Now. I'm just saying, you know, you know well, I'm just speaking. I'm not talking about anybody. I'm not even talking about myself. There comes a time now when the spirit be gone. And we be yet jumping fused, and the spirit already be done came and went. And we yet jumping. So that's in other words, that's you basic common sense. And I always say com sense is not common because if it was, everybody would have some. I'm just saying, you think you figure that out. This is to the next video to today's Bible study. This is Mitty Man saying whatever you get, whatever you get into, if God is not in it. Please, ma'am, please, sir, come out of it because it's gonna come to nothing. Till the next time, peace, good day.